Project MK Ultra was the code name for a series of experiments run by the CIA to study the effects of psychedelic drugs on humans. It was a wild way of seeing if there was the potential to control the human mind, and it was illegal. In the wake of MK Ultra, the science and medical communities got a little bit nervous about studying the effects of things like acid and mushrooms on humans. But things are changing. Dr Stephen Bright is the co-founder of the Psychedelic Research in Science and Medicine Association and he joins me now on weekends. G'day Stephen. Hi Andrea, thanks for having me. I hear a lot these days about microdosing. Can you explain what that involves? So microdosing involves taking a sub-threshold dose of a psychedelic substance. So it's usually about the tenth of a normal dose. So it means that the person, when taking the dose, won't experience any of the usual perceptual changes associated with psychedelic drugs. However, the aim of microdosing, based on a number of anecdotal reports, is that people report that it increases their creativity, their present moment focus, uh, decreases their anxiety, and in general, enhances their work performance. So they generally take the tenth of a dose every second or third day for a period of time, say two or three weeks uh, in a row and then have a break from it because the psychedelic drugs produce tolerance so quickly through a process called tachyphylaxis. Basically, if I took a tab of acid today, I'd need to take four tomorrow to get the same effect and maybe 20 the day after that. Wow, it happens that quickly. Correct. Uh, you're currently supervising a student at Curtin University with a constr- controlled is, is study. That a, Edith Cowan University. Edith Cowan, sorry, uh, with a, a controlled study in microdosing. Can you tell me a little bit about that? So I'm currently supervising an honours student in psychology at uh, Edith Cowan University and she's proposing to conduct research in microdosing that aims to replicate one of the first studies that have ever been done in this area, uh, which was done at Macquarie University. The results haven't been published, so I can't talk in too much detail, but some key findings were uh, that there were some changes with regard to people's mood, their present state focus, and also uh, with regard to their personality. And so this student's looking at people who microdose and comparing them with people who engage in contemplative yoga and in addition to a control group. The idea being by comparing them with the control group, we can see whether people who microdose do actually experience differences with regard to mood, present moment focus and personality. And by comparing it with the yoga group, uh, we may be able to make the case subsequent to further research that people who aren't able to engage in practices such as contemplative yoga due to physical disability, which essentially has the same aims in terms of you know, improving people's mood, enhancing their present moment focus, perhaps these people could uh, engage in microdosing as a way to, to achieve the same outcomes if they're unable to engage in these sorts of practices. Well, really look forward to uh, checking out the results of that study. Um, So that's microdosing. What about going the full-on dose on psychedelics? Is there any data on the benefits or risks of that? We are in the midst of an international psychedelic science renaissance, so there is plenty of data on that. So my first research was conducted by Dr Rick Strasman, a psychiatrist who was trained during the period in which uh, psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy was occurring before it was banned as a result of the social movements in the 60s and 70s. And he wanted to become a psychedelic therapist, obviously couldn't do so, and then later in his career, he basically uh, ended the embargo on psychedelic research by conducting a small study just looking at very basic stuff like uh, blood after administering people a drug called dimethyltryptamine. Dimethyltryptamine is a naturally occurring human neurotransmitter, but when taken exogenously, it produces phenomenal effects. And so what's particularly interesting from his work is not so much what he found with regard to the blood plasmas and so forth, but the qualitative reports people were providing in which they were reporting being propelled 
into a, another dimension where there were entities communicating with them or having near-death experiences or staring in the face of God. And he published this in a book called DMT, The Spirit Molecule. Since that research occurred, there's been an explosion of psychedelic science. At John Hopkins Medical School, they have confirmed that psilocybin, the active ingredient in magic mushrooms, can produce mystical states. Uh, research at Imperial College London has demonstrated that these mystical states might be due to parts of the brain being turned off, allowing for increased interconnectivity between different brain networks that wouldn't normally cross-talk. And those researchers have gone on to do some preliminary studies into the potential of psilocybin as a treatment for depression. Meanwhile, there's, uh, John Hopkins has continued their research, providing good evidence with regard to the effects of psilocybin-assisted psychotherapy for people in palliative care, with the results showing that it reduces depression, reduces anxiety, increases quality of life, and increases the interactions that they're having with significant others. Um, in addition to that, there is studies underway looking at the potential for psilocybin-assisted psychotherapies for substance use disorders, with two studies conducted, one looking at tobacco, in which after 12 months, 67% uh, of people had remained abstinent, and with alcohol as well at New York University. And those researchers are replicating that research now with large randomised controlled trials to gather further evidence of whether these are effective interventions or not. When you talk about, uh, I mean, you talk about people with depression may be patients who would benefit from this type of therapy. Is the thinking that these drugs, I guess, create this spiritual experience and this mystical state, but that to be integrated with therapy alongside it? So compared to what was happening in the 60s, contemporary psychedelic-assisted psychotherapy involves a large focus on preparing the person for the psychedelic experience ensuring they have adequate coping mechanisms and then a long period of integration afterwards so that they can integrate the experience, understand what it means in the context of their life and actually apply that within their daily functioning. MDMA, a lot of people would, you know, might just think that it was created as a party drug, but it was originally developed as a drug to improve psychotherapy. Has there been any new research into its use with mental health? Yes, there's been a significant amount of research conducted on MDMA, particularly uh, that's sponsored by the Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies in the US, of which PRISM is a um, collaborating partner. So MAPS have completed six phase two clinical studies uh, looking at the efficacy of MDMA-assisted psychotherapy on treating PTSD, particularly among uh survivors of sexual assault, uh, war veterans and police officers, other first responders. The pooled data showed that 66% of people that received the MDMA rather than the placebo no longer met criteria for PTSD at, at 12 month follow up. And so this pooled data was presented to the FDA uh, about 12 months ago and the FDA in the US have given authorization for MAPS to go ahead now with multi-site international phase three trials, which will ultimately lead to MDMA becoming a prescription medication for the treatment of PTSD in the US. So do you, you foresee a time when psychiatrists might be able to prescribe psychedelics? Look, I remain optimistic that uh, these drugs will become medicines again for the explicit use within the context of psychiatry, but it requires a paradigm shift in psychiatry. At the moment, a patient comes in maybe for a 20-minute consult and is given a, a, some medication to take home. This is a, involves intensive psychotherapy and the drug is actually administered in a controlled setting with trained therapists who supervise the individual as they undergo the psychedelic experience. While it's paradigm changing in terms of the way in which the therapy is conducted and the drugs are administered, it's also paradigm changing in that we're talking about cures for mental illness here, where psychiatry has often worked a bit like palliative care, where they're looking after people and trying to reduce the symptoms of the disorder, but have not really been able to provide a cure. 
we're really looking at the frontier here of psychiatry where we may be seeing cures for disorders such as PTSD. Dr Stephen Bright studies human relationships with drugs. He's a harm reduction advocate and a clinically trained psychologist with Edith Cowan University and Curtin and the co-founder of PRISM Psychedelic Research in Medicine and Science. Thanks for your time today.